Welcome to Fountain of Life Ministry. Come on. Where lives are being changed. And Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If it sounds like we are crazy in here, we are. We're crazy for the Lord. If we sound like a nut in here, we are that too. But we screwed on to the right boat. Amen. Stay tuned. Take some notes. I believe God will speak to you this morning. Amen. And I want to say this to all of you, my, the listeners out there, the one that's been a view in this program. I know you've been viewing the program because I see in here the comments. I want to ask you this. If this ministry has been blessing you, causing you to grow and develop, I ask you to think about it. Take it before God and see what God will have you to contribute to the ministry. We're not asking you how much to give. You give whatever the Holy Spirit put in your hearts to give. But we ask you to do that so we can keep the equipment up, so we can continue to bring you the uncompromised word. Amen? Amen. Praise. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Praise the good Lord. Was that all right? Yeah. All right. Praise the good Lord. Hallelujah. You know, one of my mentors was at a gas station one morning. And, uh, you know, he's was out there pumping gas. And uh, someone that was in the store while he was pumping gas, and uh, he said, oh, I know who you are. I see you on TV all the time. And, uh, oh, yeah, my mama watched you all the time. And so my mentor asked him, he says, well, have you ever sent anything to the ministry to help us out? He said, oh, no. Oh, no. He said, why? He said, because you ain't never asked for nothing. Yeah, that's right. So sometimes... You know, I have to say things like I say, because if you don't ask, people won't, won't give, don't receive. Amen. That's right. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. I believe that's James 4, 4, 4, 3, somewhere in that neighborhood. So this is the reason why I come, I make those appeals, because we do need to keep the ministry running. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, turn your Bibles to Mark. Our diving board scripture, all y'all ought to know where it's at. Where is it? Hallelujah. That's our diving board scripture. That's the one we've been using to get into the word with. Amen? Say amen, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you out of here to see Kansas City beat somebody today. All right? Hallelujah. Mark, <laughs> y'all said ain't never preseason. I don't care as long as Patrick throwing the ball. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm just as happy as a lark. Sis Mary, you do what I told you to do? Yes, okay, praise the good Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many, how many of y'all miss Sister Mary this morning? Did y'all miss her? Yes. All right then, praise God. Well, just remember this. She got a birthday this month, all right? <laughs> Let her know how much you miss her. Oh, that's true. You know, I mean, for a fact. So we're going to see how many folks miss her. All right. I know I'm putting her on the spot, but you know what? That's my sister. I can do it. And ain't nothing she can do about it. She, she ain't going to get mad and quit. So, uh, so I just have fun with it. Amen? Mark chapter 7. Look at verse what? 24. All right. Praise God. Look what it says. And from thence he arose, talking about Jesus, and went into the borders of Tyre and sit him aside him and entered into the house and would have no man to know it, but he could not be hid. Hallelujah. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and and what and did what? Fell at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Phoenician woman by nation. Amen. And she what? Besought him that he would cast forth, that he would do what? Cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meat or proper to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. I explained to you what the dogs meant, right? Yeah. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's bread, or eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. My Lord, it had to have been very profound. For her to say something that would cause the devil to go out of her daughter. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I heard 
your praise team singing this morning, and uh, I'm not knocking the song at all, but I, but I'm a teacher, and my spirit man is tuned in to things that's being said, whether it be praise team saying it, whether it be another minister saying it, it doesn't matter. I'm tuned into it. Uh, miracles, we talked about miracles in the song. And I'm not saying there's something wrong with the song. But I, but I heard the song say, release it. Release it. Release it, Lord. Release it, Lord. Well, this is not a put down. But we got to have the truth. Whatever going to be released, you're going to release it, not God. God is not going to release healing. He's not going to release miracles. I mean, he will, don't get me wrong. But the Bible says we are people of faith. All right? We walk by faith and not by sight. This is why many people won't serve the Lord in the capacity that they should because they don't see anything. They don't hear anything. They don't feel anything. So we limit ourselves to what we will do because we have no proof of evidence. But faith is the evidence. Amen? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. See, now the reason I bring it to our attention because, see, I prayed the same way. I sang the same way. I am the man, you are the man, the woman, the child, the daughter. You are the one that releases the power and authority in the earth realm. You are the one. You are the one that have it. So it's going to be your sayings. Like this lady, it was her sayings that caused the devil to go out of the daughter. It's going to be our sayings for our healing to manifest. Pray. Here's the reason why come God is going to, see, I tell people, God is not going to heal you. He said, oh, my God, Pastor. See, God has already healed you. Amen. See, spiritually, you are already healed. You have to release the faith. That causes the healing to manifest. So you'll be waiting for, for doomsday for God to heal you. Because Jesus ain't coming back and down the cross anymore. You're going to have to take what he did when he was here. Amen. Now I know that sounds cold to some, or hard to some people in religion. But I'm not about religion, I'm about truth. Amen. Amen. I, I want to just, just, uh, well, you can just stay parked right there. The Lord just brought this to my attention. I like it when the Lord speak to me like this. Um, because it's all proof. Uh, thank you, Father. Uh, it, it, it's, it's an, it's an uh, example, an analogy. And see, we, we got to get to, we got to get some understanding. I want, uh, listen, this is what the Lord just said. You wonder why it takes me so long to finish series? Because of stuff right here, just like God is doing right now. He's one that interrupts. But it's his church, and it's his flock, and his sheep. Turn your Bibles and we'll to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17. And look at verse 1, verse 1. Genesis 17, 1. Genesis 17, 1. <clears throat> it says, are you there? It says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect or complete. And I will, listen now, make thy covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Oh, my gracious. Look at verse 4. 
Look what it says. Can we read it at the same time on the count of three? One, two, three. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now listen, when he told Abraham that, Abraham did not have a child, period. None. But he says, as far as I'm concerned, my covenant is with you now. As far as I'm concerned. As far as God is concerned, you are healed right now. Amen. As far as he's concerned, you're healed right now. What you got to do is do exactly what Abraham did. Abraham walked by faith and he became the father of men and nations. You got to see yourself as God see you. He said you are healed. He says, as far as I'm concerned, you heal. Amen. You heal. Amen. Yeah, your body doesn't feel like it. I know that. You got aches and pains. Well, how can you call me healed? I'll be lying for saying I'm healed. Oh, really? Really? Put Joel 3, 9 on the board. This is the Holy Spirit. Joel 3, 9. Joel 3, 9. Hallelujah. Look what it says. What does the word proclaim mean? It means to declare, to tell, to do something, right? Yes. Okay, listen, this is Israel in trouble. It says, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Does what? Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Next verse. What does it say? Beat your plowshares into swords and your plumbing hooks into spears. Finish it out for me. Set, finish it. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it one more time. Now was the were they lying? He said, "Let the weak say I'm strong." You may not be feeling strong. You may not think you're strong. You may not be walking strong. You may not be talking strong. He said, but you say it. You say it. You say it. And see, when you say it, you release his hands. You release his power. You release his Holy Spirit. You release all of that stuff when you say what he said. He can't release nothing in your life if you don't, if you don't agree with him. Huh? You say, well, I don't feel healed. I don't feel sick. What did he say? He said, let him say, I know you ain't healed. I know you don't feel good. I know you don't sit. He said, but say it. That's right. I am strong. That's right. But what's that going to do? It's going to put you in agreement with God. Huh? That's what it's going to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you say it. Some of you have been dealing with a problem right now for a long time, for years. And you've been going to the doctor and going to the doctor. All you've been doing is treating it. That's it, Pastor. That's it. And you're not by yourself. Nah, nah, nah. Many people have as well. That's true. But you know what you got to do? You got to go back and see what God said about your healing. That's right. And then you got to get in line and agree with God. And then you got to say it. Yeah, huh? Right. You got to say it. How can I say, or can I get an amen? amen. Praise God. I don't know who you are, but start saying it. Start saying it. Start saying it. Why should I do it? Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. Why should I say it? Because my word I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit, and they are life. Why should I say it? Because the word has gone out of my mouth. Will not come back void and empty. Come on now. You got to say it. See, you don't think enough of yourself and you don't really trust God. That's why you won't say it. You think you're stupid and foolish. Well, he made you, didn't he? And sometimes you act like a clown. Say it with your mouth. See, the devil hoping you don't say it. He hoping you don't say it. He hoping you don't confess nothing with your mouth. That's true. That's 
See, if you never confess it, it lies dormant. The power lies dormant. Amen? See, the power that's in you is activated with your mouth. Huh? It's activated with your mouth. Hallelujah, praise God. And look, and don't speak it out your mouth and then go act sad. Act like you just lost your, your, your best dog, your best friend or whatever. And say, well, I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. Praise God. I believe. And then you go somewhere and act just as sad. People come along and say, how you doing? Well, I tell you what, I got my good days and I got my bad days. Well, what should I say, Pastor? You ought to say, you know what? According to the word of God, I believe I'm healed. Huh? That's what you ought to say. That's what you ought to say. You ain't got to give them what they want to hear. And you won't be lying. He said, let the weak say I'm strong. Was he telling them to lie? Was he telling them to lie? No, he, he want to get behind them. He want to show himself strong to them. But he couldn't do it unless you say what he says. Good word, Good word. Amen. So let me ask him, are you weak? No. <laughs> are you poor? No. Go ahead, girl. I hear you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Is all your needs met? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. But Jesus said, because of your sayings. And the reason he said that, because what she said, she said was written. You got to say it was written. You got to say it was written. Are you with me? Yes. Praise the good Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's turn your Bibles to Jeremiah 15. How many of y'all like that real old covenant? Well, it's good because it complements the new. But one thing I want to get in people's head, we're on a better covenant. This is shadows and things to come that complements the new. But you can't live there. I wonder why I couldn't see because I had these glasses on. <laughs> these things are for long distance truck driving. You know, praise God. Couldn't see nothing on them babies. I just got him anyway so I can find Sister Jackie when I need her. <laughs> so she don't get lost in the crowd. I lost her one time in San Francisco, California. No, it was in Los Angeles, California. I thought I was going to have to call the cops. She walked in one door. We was in the market district shopping for clothing. You could walk in there, but you couldn't could come back out the same way you walked in. And she ended up over there two streets there. Well, I said, Lord, as so I was just getting ready to go get the cop and describe what my wife looked like. And I said, God, somebody got my wife up here. <laughs> Praise God. But anyway, Jeremiah chapter who? I said 15. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Is God good? All the time. Y'all know about y'all, but I like to have fun. Me too. I mean, I mean, there ain't no stuffed cabbage. Amen. <laughs> Jeremiah 15. And we gonna look at mm -hmm. Lord, 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 can you help me, Jesus? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, woo! <laughs> Jewel, you know about that stuff, don't you? Yeah. All right, look at verse sixteen. Jeremiah talking. Look what he says. He says, "Thy words were found, and I did what? Eat them." And thy words was unto me, what? Joy. The joy. Yes. And what? Rejoicing, Rejoicing of, my of my heart. For I am called by thy name, by thy name yes. O Lord God of hosts. Yes. Now, how did Jeremiah eat the words? Did he eat the words that was written on the paper? No. How did he eat it? One of Deanna's favorite scriptures in mine, I esteem his word above all my necessary food. Sound like Jeremiah did too, right? Yeah. So how did we? How did, how did Jeremiah eat the word? He says, thy words was found and I did eat them. Wow. 
I believe you can eat the word. I believe there's a way you can eat the word. Y'all want me to tell you? Give me a dollar and fifty cent, I'll tell you. (laughs) 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 Well, listen. Have you, I'm going to show you how he ate it. Have you ever been in a service, a setting like this, and you got some guest speaker up here preaching like Carlos, and uh, everything he says is something like you ain't never heard before. It's something like you just rejoicing. Oh, you can't even sit there in that seat. You jump up. You just happy, and ha- I mean, you wide open. And somebody sitting over there on the other side says, look at Cindy. She's sitting over there just eating it up. Everything he said, he just eating it up. Why would she say that? Because she saw that person rejoicing. So what has God said to us? How do we eat this word? We rejoice. We rejoice. When you find the truth. When you find the word. And a you what you do when he says, Deanna, before I created you, I healed you. I put something in you that the, so the devil could not stop you from doing what you want to do. Deanna found that word. And she just ate it up. She just went to rejoicing and found joy, praising God. How enter into his courts with thanksgiving and, and praise, just eating it up. That's how you're going to eat the word. You're going to find the truth. And then you're going to rejoice in the truth. Amen. Oh, praise God. You're going to say, Lord, look, this is what you said about me. Look what Jeremiah said. For I am called by thy name. Woo. Oh, Lord God of hosts. I'm called. You call me. I'm going to rejoice. I found your word. And and I start rejoicing. Because I found out what you said about me. In the book of Ezra. When they found out. What the word has said. About the daughters and things that didn't have any inheritance. About. uh, About when. uh, they, They thought they was law. They was destituted. But then when they stood up. And read the word and found out that, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, we weren't forgotten. Wait a minute, he didn't think about us. This is for us too. And they started rejoicing, praising God when they found out what the word said. And that's what you and I ought to do. When we find out what the word says about us, we ought to rejoice and make the devil mad. Make it rejoice and make it mad. Now, you know what happens when you start praising God and worshiping God, right? You know what happens, don't you? You create an atmosphere, amen, hallelujah. And then the power of God comes down. And then the anointing of God comes down. And whatever it was that was ailing you, praise God, it ain't ailing you anymore because you created that atmosphere by what? Joying and rejoicing because you found the word. Thank you, Jesus. So what, you got to go find out what he said about you. What did it say about your poverty? You got to go find the scripture and then rejoice. Now listen, when you find it, you got to be obedient. You got to act on it. You just can't see it and look at it. Oh no, you got to do it. Faith without works is what? All right, then that means we got to be doing something about it. When we find it, we need to do something about it. What's the title of our message? Heal his children bread. So he already said that you were healed. By your stripes you're healed. Is that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. He said you being a daughter of Abraham, you ought to be healed, shouldn't you? Yeah. All right then. Praise God. A lot of Christian folks don't know they've been healed. So they're still waiting to get healed. In Hosea chapter 11, he says, I healed Ephraim. I took them by their hands, but they didn't know I healed them. They didn't know it. You can walk around the rest of your life and, and, uh, and be healed spiritually, but it never manifests itself in the natural because you don't know it. 
If you don't know that you're healed, there's no way you can bring it to a reality. And guess what it is that'll bring it to a reality? Acting on what you believe. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo! Y'all with me? I don't know about you. Let's look at Psalms 38. I mean, Psalms 34 right quick. Psalms 34 right quick. Psalms 34. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I preach myself happy. Hallelujah. I got two. I got two. So if y'all think I'm crazy, I am. For the Lord. Psalms 34. Are you there? Your Bible got verse 8? Look what it says. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Listen to what it says. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. The man that doesn't trust in him won't be blessed. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, thank you, Father. I plan on finishing this today. So if I be a little longer, y'all say, well, God is leading me to do it. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. You got to say what God says. Listen. See, even when you don't have pain, even when you're not hurting, even when you got a good day going on, get up and say, Father. I just want to thank you. I'm whole and healed and healthy. I want to thank you, Father God. Jesus Christ strikes, validated my healing. I want to thank you, Father. My leg doesn't hurt anymore because Jesus healed it. Now, your leg probably be doing fine right then, but you know how certain things don't act up until nighttime. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. But see, you say, Father, I want to thank you. Yes. Arthritis is gone out of my knee, out of my leg, out of my back, out of my hip, or whatever. And you do that even while you're doing fine. Right. Even when there ain't no pain. There is no sickness. Amen. And you need to confess that every day. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, let me show you something. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to um, go to uh, Hosea 10. Hosea chapter 10. I'm making some of you old testament dwellers happy this morning. Isaiah. I mean, uh, Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. Lord, can I get him to turn over there? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hosea chapter 10. Are you there? Now listen to this. Hallelujah. Look at verse 12. Look what it says. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and reign, and reign righteousness upon you. But the point I want you to get, he said, sow to yourselves. Sow seeds to yourselves. How to do that, Pastor? With your mouth. Yeah. Father, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I heard what the doctor said. But I believe I'm here from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, I heard what the doctor said. He asked me, anybody else in my family had it? Because you know when you go to doctors, yeah. did your mama have it? Did your daddy? Did your sister? Anybody in your family got it? Because see, automatically they're going to put it on hereditary, right? You, you uh, inherit it. But let me tell you something. When you get the truth, you stop that inheritance. Huh? You stop it. And here's the, reason you can, here's the reason you stop it. Because God didn't give it to you. Huh? So you say, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I know cancer runs in my family, but it stops right here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I curse it from the roots right now in Jesus' mighty name. Body, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. There's a shield upon you. You will fight off every harmful disease that comes towards your body. See, the Bible says that you are wonderfully made. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 
You are the apple of his eye. Huh? Hallelujah. See, you got to speak to the body and you got to speak to the sickness and the disease. You can't sit back and wait to God to do it just because you're a child of God. I'm telling you now, everybody in here is already healed. Spiritually, legally, you are healed. All right? But what we want to do is bring it to into manifestation. We want to make it, we want to bring it into the physical realm. So it can do you and I some good. All right? Because there's no good if it stays in the spiritual realm. What did, God, what did God tell Abraham? He says, as far as I'm concerned, you're already a father of many nations. And he didn't have not one child. As far as God's concerned, you're already healed. And, and here you are on crutches. But as far as God's concerned, you're healed. God, see, God don't look at what he sees. He look at what you are. We look at what we are present tense. You got to see beyond that. Amen. You cannot contact God with your senses. Your five senses. What are they? Smelling, tasting, seeing, hearing, and feelings. You can't contact God with those things. Those five common senses for you to maneuver, manip manipulate the world, the natural world which you live in. But when it comes to God, you get out of the sense realm into the realm of faith. Amen. Well, how do I get in there, Pastor? You go find the word and see what the word says, and then you're going to do it. You're going to act, you're going to speak it, and you're going to act on it. That's what you do. It ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. I've had issues on top of issues since I've been teach, teaching on this, on this thing right here. But it has not stopped me one day. Because I know on the other side of what the devil is attacking me with, I know on the other side there's victory. And I know how to get over there into the victory lane. Death and life is in the power of my tongue. That's how you're going to release it, see? You got to get this. God wants you to get this. Yes. He wants to get behind you. Yes, he does, Pastor. It don't have to be like it has been all these many years. It don't have to be that way. You know, I, I just looked at him. I just talked to him. I didn't talk to him, but I just seen online the other day where there's a doctor. He's still practicing medicine. He's 101 years old. And he was talking about how his health is. See, even though you're a child of God, you've been born again, you saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, even though you've been washed with the blood, you still need to take care of your body. You still need to take care of your body. You know, I got some information here to talk to you, to tell you about your body. See, Christian folks, we think we can do whatever we want to do, live any kind of way we want to live. All right, and we just go to God and he'll fix it up. There's laws you're going to have to follow behind. There's spiritual laws. There's nutrition laws that you got to adhere to. Amen? Me too. Got to adhere to them. Praise God. You got to hear, yeah, you heal. Yeah, you heal you over 2,000 years ago, but there's nutritional laws. Amen? You can't eat all the pork chop and all the fat back meat and everything you want to eat. Don't do no exercise. Don't go get a checkup. Don't go do none of that stuff. Just sit back, have them raw steaks and all that kind of stuff, you know, and just think your body's just going to handle it. No, it's going to break down. Paul says all things are good, but not all things are expedient. Yeah, it tastes good, but you pay for it after a while. Hmm. A little on the lips and a whole lot on the hips. <laughs> oh, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Uh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Well, y'all were looking so mad at me, I figured I'd try to make you laugh. <laughs> Amen. Nobody got mad, right? Because I ain't pointing at nobody. I closed my eyes when I said it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, my mama been sitting out there. She'd have gave me some eyes like, boy, you just wait till you get out of here. <laughs> so, so my mom is gone, so Mary takes her place. Praise God. But we got we to gotta adhere to the nutrition laws, you know. We want to stay healthy and here. But, you know, statistics did say Christian folks are living longer than people that's not, that's non-Christian people. Amen. amen. Praise the good Lord. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, where the last now, look at this now. Look, look. Listen. Let's get back to it. I might quit because we got to do communion. Okay. Look at uh, verse 12 again. It says, so to yourself in righteousness. Now, when you are confessing and proclaiming that you are healed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, you are sown in righteousness because it is God's righteousness that you be healed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Healing is part of righteousness. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, if you look at this, it don't look like it's saying what I'm saying. He says, so to yourselves, so to yourselves in righteousness. But I want to show you that I am right and that he is talking about Sowing seeds. Okay? Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. It says, they have spoken words. S what? Swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus, oh my grace, look, because they've been making a covenant. Thus judgment sprang up as hemlock in the pharaohs of the field. What sprung up? Judgment. In other words, they got what they was, they got what they were saying. And he says it sprung up like hemlock. Hemlock is a poison. It's a poison weed. Huh? So he said, look what he says. They have spoken words. They have spoken words. You don't think speaking words, you don't think words mean nothing? Of course they do. They are powerful. Yes, they, are. they created heaven and earth. And then God gave you the privilege. Gave you the privilege to imitate him. Jesus. Look what he says again. They have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment sprang up. They kept doing it so much until judgment day came. And I'm not talking about judgment day where you go to hell. I'm talking about judgment day came because you've been saying it so much. That seed took root. And now you're experiencing what you've been talking. So you sow seeds to yourself. Get up in the morning and tell yourself how good you look. You, is that what you say every day? Yeah, praise God. Get up. Do you do the same thing? Yes, <laughs> I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. I'm God's son. I'm God's child. I'm whole and healthy and healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet and everything in between. Right. Hallelujah. All my organs, all my vital organs are functioning like they're supposed to. God has created them to be so. That sounds stupid, especially when you got a pain over here in the side, and especially when the doctor said you might have to have surgery and you're still talking that stuff. That's what the devil told you, tell you. But if it wasn't nothing to it, he wouldn't come to you and tell you that. Huh? Huh? Thank you, Father. You say it anyway. Let it come out your mouth. I don't care how you're feeling. I don't care how you're feeling. Let that weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Amen. Let the ugly say I'm good looking. No, I was just, I was just joking. I was just joking, man. Praise God. Some things ain't going to change. You know? 
<laughs> I'm talking about I'm talking about in the spirit. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I mean, you know, I can walk around and say, Father, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe I'm six foot four. Wait, well, you know, that ain't gonna happen. Because my genes and everything else has already settled that issue. Mm -hmm. true. Amen. I'm six two. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> Just joking, just joking. Praise God. Y'all love me? Amen. I love you all too. Amen. Praise God. You know, my whole thing is, Lord, help me make it simple. Amen. See, he says, sow seeds to yourself. Sow them to yourself. You can say, you can sow to yourself. Hallelujah. You know, I've always been a clothes man, a suit man. I mean, I'll before I ever got into ministry, even in high school. <laughs> I mean, I was. Everybody else was wearing sneakers and Converse. I'm wearing suits and clothes and more head sweaters and high boy starch shirts. But then when I got married, everything changed. I didn't, I didn't have that kind of money. <laughs> because when you get married and get a family, you know, that money got to go someplace else. So I used to look in my closet and I saw... Yeah, Jack and the children and bills and everything else took it all. But my wife told me one day, she said, honey, why don't you just look in that closet and tell that closet, you are full of suits of clothes. Mm -hmm. wow. Speak to it. And I knew it, but she had to remind me, see. So I did. And uh, there is history. It's history. I have. I don't have a need for anything. I don't have a need for anything. That don't mean I don't want anything. I said I don't have a need. That's a difference in a need and a want. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. So I have now because, see, first I have to speak it out of my mouth. Those seeds got to go somewhere and take root. If the Bible says the word of God is seed and seeds are designed to be planted, we plant it with our mouth. You know, I can say something in private to Cindy. So y'all don't hear me and just be getting on her case. And you won't know what I said to you until you see the expression on her, on her face because of the seeds I put in her ear. Or I could walk over here and say something really nice and, and jolly and whatever, and she can't stay still in that seat. That's how powerful words are. That's how powerful words are. You know how powerful they are, don't you? You know they can set you on fire, right? Or they can cool you off, right? <laughs> can nobody make you as mad as your husband or as mad as your wife? Amen. Hallelujah. I have been hot. I've had many candlelights set on the main. Yes, sir. I mean, when you be married ever since we've been together ever since 1968, you can't tell me everything will be smooth as oil. No, it's not. Amen. No, sir. I had some, I had some days that felt like bras. Y'all know, y'all know what a bra is, don't you? You ever been in the bra patch? Uh, everywhere you turn, boom, you get something. You know, you get hit with something. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Father, help me with these folks. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter thirty. Yes. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you. Thank God for Deuteronomy. You know, see, I, I'm a realist. I'm a, I'm a man of faith. Uh, but I'm also, I, I'm real. I, ain't no faith in me. Amen. If it is, the Lord hasn't showed it to me yet. If it was, Sister Jackie, she would show it to me. She told me between her, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they're going to keep me straight. I said, you mean tell them the Lord needs you? But, uh, hallelujah. Say so what? The fourth, yeah. The fourth, I didn't think it was three. Uh, I thought it was only three Godheads. Jackie told me she made the fourth Godhead. So, uh, so I said, okay. But you know what, though? I, I'll tell you something. What we have has kept the ministry together, has kept us together. 
And what we have is the principles of the Word of God. This is what has kept, you know, we've had time. We've had fun times, great times. And we had times that wasn't so fun and great. Amen. But, but, the, but the root was the Word of God. And that's what kept us glued together. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because I used to be, I mean, uh, she used to be a mess. <laughs> Deuteronomy. I ain't hear nothing y'all say. Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 30. Look at verse 11. Look what verse 11 says. He says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel out of their number, then shall they give every man a... I'm in Exodus. Where I tell y'all to turn? Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> All of a sudden, Exodus look like Deuteronomy. <laughs> oh, praise God. Y'all, I, I thought I heard somebody say, what, what? All right, let me go ahead and find it. Carlos, you didn't get it, did you? No, I, I gave it. I kept it. <laughs> I get him confused sometimes. Okay. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy to me. I was just in Exodus, the wrong book. Now I'm telling y'all to go to the right book, which is Deuteronomy. Okay? See, he thought I was right the whole while. <laughs> That's why I got to get y'all straight. <laughs> verse 30. I mean, uh, Deuteronomy 30. Look at verse 11. It says, for this commandment. I like this. He says, for this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Thank you, Lord. Help me, Jesus. It is not in heaven. Hmm. It is not in heaven that thou should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may what? Hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea. That thou should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it into us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word, hallelujah, but the word is nigh unto thee. Where is it at? Where is it at? It's where? It's in, the word is in your mouth. He says, it's in your mouth. You ain't got to go across the sea and get it. You ain't got to go up to the heavens and get it. It's in your mouth. Huh? He said, but the word is, is very nigh. He says, very nigh, not close, but very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou may do it. You got to do the word. Huh? You ain't got to, look. Sometimes people, when they got healing evangelists coming in town, which is nothing wrong with healing evangelists, they run all over town to get to a healing line or to get this and that. He said, you got it home on your nightstand. You got it in the back windshield of your car. Talking about your Bible. Or you got it on the mantelpiece somewhere. You only pick it up on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's if you come to church. He said, but it's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. Huh? It's in your mouth. Your healing is in your mouth. Your home is in your mouth. Your husband acting right is in your mouth. Your wife acting right is in your mouth. Your children acting right is in your mouth. Your promotion on your job is in your mouth. Huh? Everything is in your mouth. It's in your mouth. This church was in my mouth. Amen. Amen. I came out here and they, they want a million dollars. I mean, I can't see a million dollars. But it was in my mouth. Yes, it is. God, I believe you led me that's to this property and to this church. I ain't had no million dollars. But I had it in my mouth. <laughs> I had it in my mouth. I make a long story short. We in it. It came out of my mouth. And then I came in it. We came in it. huh? It manifests out of my mouth from words that we spoke. But I just couldn't speak them. I had to go do something. I had to get up. 
get out of my car, my wife and I, my sister, and walk the property. Father, you said every place that my foot shall thread upon, you said I've given it to you. And I got up here, I said, Father, I mean, one time I walked all the way around the edges. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every step that I take, Father, you said you've given it to Fountain of Life Ministry. I thank you, Father God. We own this property. We own this church. Blah, blah. It was in my mouth. We have no more people than what we had in my mouth. God doesn't care how much you got. He just needs something from you so he can get started. Huh? That's all. He just need a seed. He just need a seed. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 says, I multiply your seed. And we confessed it from January to July. It sounds stupid and crazy, but here we is. Here I am, baby. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. It's ours. Here we are. It's ours. We ain't renting it. We're paying it. We're buying it. Hallelujah. And guess what we bought it with? A little bit of money and a whole lot of mouth. Huh? Thank you, Father. Are you with me? Thank you, Jesus. Are you with me? Okay, I got I to gotta run. Y'all got a minute? All right, I want you to go real quickly. I want you to go real quickly, real quickly to Hebrews chapter 3. Thank, God for Hebrews chapter three. Thank you, Father. Hebrews chapter 3. Thank you, Father. He says, daughter. He says, woman. Because of the saying, because of what you said, devil's going out your daughter. Wouldn't it be nice for you because of what you said, the pain go out of your body? Yes. Wouldn't it be? Yes. Well, it can happen. But guess what? It's got to get in the spirit. It's got to get in the spirit. And it don't get in the spirit overnight. Nope. You got to meditate in that thing. You got to confess this thing. See, faith come by hearing. That's right. And you got to hear that thing all the time. Gotta the process. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Where I tell you turn? Hebrews chapter 3. Hallelujah. You didn't get that one too, did you? No. All right. Hebrews chapter 3. Listen to me now. Listen, 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 listen. Hebrews chapter 3. Listen, I think I read this to you before, but I believe today it, it, would, it, it would, I believe it bears, it bears repetition, and I believe you can, maybe I'm believing God that he'll get something to click with you. Look at verse 1. Can we read this together on the count of three? Yes. One, two, three. Wherefore, our holy brethren, partakers of the holy calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Now, this word profession means confession. So he considered. Look what he tells you to do. He said, I want you to consider the man that's over what you say is our high priest. And he's also our apostle. So if he tell you to say something, it's just not some ordinary person backing you up. He said, no, it is the apostle. And it is the high priest watching over what you say. So just what you said, don't think it's nothing. It's a whole lot of something. That's right, because the apostle, which is Jesus Christ, the high priest, which is Jesus Christ, he said, I'm watching over what you say. So don't you think what you say don't mean nothing. Because right, if it didn't mean anything, I wouldn't take time to watch over it. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why you need to say what you mean and mean what you say and say it right. Yeah, that's right. A- amen. amen. He said, I'm the, I'm the apostle. And the high priest of what you say. Wow. Are you weak? No. What are you? Strong. And he says, hey, I'm over what you just said. Right. I'm over what you just said. Right. Not only am I apostle, I'm the high priest. Oh, yeah. I'm the high priest. I go to my father on your behalf because of what you say. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Hallelujah. Go to Hebrews 10.23 right quick. It's just popping up in my spirit. I got to go. Hebrews 10, 23. Yes. Thank you, Father. I don't know about you, but see, you are so powerful and you don't know it. You got something in your head that can turn the world upside down. That's your tongue. 
That's your tongue. You know, you can start a mess in this church right now with your mouth. Huh? You can, churches get tore up because of people's lips. Huh? And, they, and their lips been tearing stuff up a long time. Why don't we use them tattered devil, you know what up, from head to toe? Huh? Hebrews who? 1023, look what it says. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith. What do I mean, Pastor? Don't quit saying it. Keep on confessing it. Hold fast to it. Why should I hold fast to it, Pastor? Pastor, look what it says. Without wavering. Don't be up one day, down the next day. Don't be so nice and sweet. One morning, next morning, you, I say something to you, you got your switchblade out. Huh? You're up and down. You're up and down. you happy one day, sad the next day. One day you got a whole lot of faith. Next day you don't know what's going on in the world. I tell you what, these folks, blah, 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 blah. You confusing your own spirit with your mouth. huh? So he says, hold fast. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without waving. For he is what? Faithful that promise. He's faithful that promise. huh? He said without wavering, see? You can't waver. You can't waver. I say you can't waver. Got to be consistent. The devil won't waver. The Bible says he come to what? Steal. To kill. And to destroy. And it's not necessary in that order. Any way he can get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 